Let's be clear, every simulation is an assessment. from the University of Pittsburgh. I'm the director of Wiser. Recently, as I lecture and conduct workshops, I have been asking people who run simulations how often they do assessments with their simulations. Their answers are astounding. Every time, there are a few too many people reporting they are performing assessments less than 100% of the time that they run their simulations. Then they're shocked when I tell them they do assessments every time they run their simulation. While some of this may be a bit of play on words, there should be careful consideration given to the fact that each time we run a simulation scenario, we must be assessing the student or students that are learners. If we're going to deliver feedback, whether intrinsic in the design of the scenario or the simulation, or promote discovery during the debriefing process, somewhere, at some point, we as the faculty had to decide what we thought they did well and areas that are identified for need for improvement. To be able to do this, you had to perform an assessment. Now, let's dissect just a bit. Many people tend to equate the word assessment with some sort of grade assignment. Classically, we think of a test that may have some threshold or passing or failing or contribute in some way to figure out if someone has mastered certain learnings. Often, this may be part of the steps one needs to move on to graduate or perhaps obtain a license to practice. The technical term for this type of assessment is summative or summative assessment. People in healthcare are all too familiar with such types of assessment that are summative. Other times, however, assessments can be made periodically with the goal of not whether someone has mastered something, but with more of a focus on figuring out what they need to do to get better at what they are trying to learn. The technical term for this is formative assessment. Stated another way, formative assessment is used to promote more learning while summative assesses whether something was learned. When things can even get more confusing is when assessment activities or learning activities have components of both traits of different types of assessment activities. Nonetheless, what is important and more important than the technical details is the self-realization and acceptance of the simulation faculty member that every time you observe a simulation and then lead a debriefing, you have conducted an assessment. Such realization should allow you to understand that there is really no such thing as non-judgmental debriefing or non-judgmental observations of a simulation-based learning encounter. Goals of debriefing must be predicated upon someone's judgment of the performance of the participants that were in the simulation. Elsewise, you cannot provide and optimally promote discovery of the needed understanding of areas that require improvement and or understanding of the topic skills or decisions that were carried out correctly during the simulation, both of which are equally as important for the debriefing. So if you're going to take the time and effort to conduct simulations, please be sure and understand that assessment and rendering judgment of performance is an integral part of the learning process. Once this concept is fully embraced by the simulation educator, greater clarity can be gained in ways to optimize assessment vantage points in the design of the simulation. Deciding the assessment goals with some specificity early in the process of the simulation scenario design can lead to better decisions associated with the design elements of the scenario. The optimizing of scenario design to enhance what I call accessibility will help you whether you are applying assessments in either a formative or a summative way. So go forth and create, facilitate and debrief simulation-based learning encounters with a keen, fresh, new understanding or realization that every simulation is assessment. Until next time, happy simulating.